Hey you guys. Welcome back to the channel. <laughs> um I don't know if you notice something different about me. Something different. What is it? Different. Different. Miners are gone. Circon. <laughs> no, I, have, I don't even know what kind of accent that was. <laughs> Welcome back, my loves. Um, we're going to be doing a nail video today. And not a nail video like press-ons or acrylic because, you know, your girl's not that talented. However, at the beginning of quarantine, I actually did do two fake nails, like, with acrylic, with a, like, a kit that you buy from Rite Aid and... I should insert a picture. A picture. <laughs> I should insert a picture because I did a really good job. Like, I was proud of myself. But anyways, no, we are going to be working with nail stickers today, and it is a long story. But we have to give my nails a little bit of a break, so I am going to read what to do on this first and then I'll get into my story so I can tell you my story and we can be doing stuff as I'm telling you my story. Okay, now these are, it just says it's a nail applique. It says one application per and the directions are, and we're gonna, I think I've got everything in the directions but we're gonna go over it just to make sure. It says for the nail applique's directions, it says prep, Clean bare nails with alcohol or nail polish remover, or clean polished nails with alcohol. Oh! Oh my gosh, you can put these on top of polish. I think this kind of changes what I wanted to do. Crap, I didn't prepare for this. I was under the impression that I had to put these on my bare nails and I got all bummed out because I couldn't put this over my painted nails. And it says right here, Clean your bare nails with alcohol or nail polish remover or clean polished nails with alcohol. So that means that I can apply these over my polished nails and I didn't know that. Maybe we're going to paint a nail and test it out. That's going to take too long. I didn't plan. Ah! Okay, so maybe we'll do one hand. Oh, shoot. I'm trying to think of what I've been colors I do have. I guess let's just see what it looks like on natural nails. Let's see if it fancies up my natural nails because it is a pink and white kind of pearly color although that would look super pretty on top of like a baby pink or even like a baby blue yeah whatever we're just gonna do it like this okay all right it says apply select okay to apply okay the first directions that was prep now it's apply they really should bold that out so you don't think it's part of the sentence okay it says for the application step Select the size that fits your nail. Peel off the backing and apply starting near the cuticle. And then it says smooth downward or smooth down toward the tip of the nail and outer edges. Fold excess over the nail edge and file away the remainder. Remove gently. Oh, to remove gently, peel off the applique off the nail starting at the corner of the cuticle area, eliminate any residue with non-acetone polish remover. Okay, so that tells me two things. Number one, I need a nail file, which I did not have. I should have just brought my whole nail box. And number two, I need some kind of stick or smoothing applique. I think I'm gonna use one of those wooden dowels, so bear with me. I am gonna go grab those items. We brought the whole kit and caboodle. Gentlemen, your girls nail tech. And I want you to know that I got everything right here. Right here for you. So if you need your nails done, you comment below. And also subscribe so I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, this is my attempt at being a nail tech during quarantine. <laughs> I got everything in here. I can do acrylic, I can do gel nails, I can do dip nails. I got you because I've done it all on myself. All right, this is gonna help, even though it looks a little messy. I got hold. On. Let me move my candle up. Resituate my drink situation. 
and open up the box of wonder. Okay. We are looking for a stick file and dowel. So here is a dowel with a piece of tape on it for some reason and a gem. Okay, so we're going to use this stick and that's a smooth file. You know what? We might be able to use that. So let's grab that little buffer because I think this is going to be super gentle and I don't know. Oh, there's some kite string in there. And we probably should do some cuticle remover too. We're just going to do a little bit here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to look. I had big files in here. Oh, wait, here. In my gel nail kit. Or my dip nail kit. There is a file. Okay. Is there anything else we need? Don't think so, because I already have a towel. Okay. So, to prepare, you're going to need a nail file. This one's double-sided. One is a little bit more coarse than the other. We are going to use one of those, like, little buffing blocks, just in case the nail appliques are, like, super sensitive. And you can't use a super, like, gritty file on it. This is just backup. I don't know if we need that yet. Ugh. I've got some cuticle remover because I think that we're going to do that to my nails. Not right now, though. We're going to remove the polish. A wooden dowel with... a flat pointed edge how do you get something to focus like do i have to block my face off i don't know but you know what these are it's just a wooden stick that has a slant and you can use it to push your cuticles back and get off excess nail polish whatever you you know make little designs do whatever you want one pair of tweezels a stack of cotton rounds acetone or nail polish remover, alcohol, and our nail appliques. <laughs> so step one, take a drink of your choice because your girl's thirsty. Now I need to get you aligned ever so so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. Now, first what we're going to do is I'm just going to remove, I have clear coat. It was like a one of those Sally Hansen builder clear coats that's supposed to make your nails stronger because I figured, you know, if we're taking a break, we might as well get them as strong as we can while we're taking a break from acrylics. And it's not going to be a long break. I have a towel down because I have a tendency to be a little messy with things. And the last time that I did my nails... I took a little bit of the varnish off of our kitchen table, so we use tablecloth now. <laughs> I'm just removing the nail polish. Well, into my story we go. Anyways, I had to give little Miss Bark Butt back there a bath. And I didn't think anything of it, obviously. You know, I always give her a bath. I take a shower. You know, I give my son a bath. I do everything that I need to do with my nails on. That's just, I'm used to living with my nails. And I keep her collar on her while she's in the bath so I can kind of maneuver her a little bit better. And somehow, I got everything all said and done, scrubbed, conditioned, good to go. I was at the point where I was drying her off and... I dry her off, like I give her a bath in the shower. I say bath because that's just what I'm so used to, but I actually do it in the shower. And I find it easier for her because I can kind of shut the door and then she can't jump out. And that's the same reason as, as to why I leave the collar on hers because it's easier for me to kind of maneuver her while I'm washing her. She just... She likes to be a puppy and give me a hard time. Well, anyways, I was all said and done. I was drying her off, and I, I like to dry her off a little bit before 
she actually gets out because as soon as she gets out, she shakes. It's I think it's instinct. I, I don't think I've ever seen a dog get a bath in that shape. And I like to dry her off. Well, anyways, I was drying her off and somehow my nail got caught in the towel in her collar and it popped. Like it lifted the back half of my nail up on my acrylic. And I'm like, shit, but that's okay. You know, I've had nails lift before. It wasn't the end of the world. Okay, I'm not going to move you. I'm actually just going to go wash my hands real quick. It's right here. Right here. <laughs> I'm not going far. I'll be back, baby. But seriously, I got it took me forever to get that angle right, so I'm just not gonna move the camera. <sighs> wow, I just shook it. The earthquake coming in. No. Oh, I'm so excited we're gonna be starting our workout challenge soon. I'm finally motivated enough to do that. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with my tongue to do that. <laughs> But now I'm going to need lotion. I'm just a mess. I'm not prepared like I thought I needed. Anyways, okay. Well, it lifted the back of my nail. So I'm like, crap, whatever. I finished drying her off. We're using the Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover. It's just this little, like, blue bottle. And it says you um, squeeze under your cuticles. And it says after 15 seconds, push back your cuticles. So that's what I'm going to do. Well, anyways, I finished drying her off and got her put up because when she gets wet, she, I don't like her jumping all over the beds or the couches or whatever. So I put her up for a little bit and uh, let her dry. I usually I tried to dry her with a blow dryer, but she really doesn't like it a lot. And I started looking at my nail because usually <clears throat> I've. Like I said, I've had nails for forever. So I've had them pop. I've had them come off. I've had them lift. I've had them crack. I've had them chip. I've had them this, that, and the other thing. And everything's always been okay. It's been repaired and we've been good to go. But usually I have a process. You know, if my nail lifts and it's a few days, this happened this past weekend. So... I had a few days. I was actually technically supposed to get my nails filled yesterday. That would have been my two weeks, but I didn't go for this reason. Now, anyways, I have a process of what I do. You know, if a nail lifts, <clears throat> if it is lifted so much so that there's no point of it even being on my finger, yes, I will remove it. But I try very desperately to keep and hold on to my nail, especially when I have a few days left before I get a fill because I feel so odd without one nail. It's like I got 10 inch nails on nine fingers and then like enough. I don't, it just bugs me. Well, anyways, um, I have my process. I wash my hands a couple of times. You know, I make sure it's super dry under there because when it's lifted, you have a chance of moisture getting in and then moisture will create infection and then infection that's semi-sealed in is like a breeding ground and it multiplies faster and faster and faster and faster and then soon you have a really big problem. So I like to wash my hands really good, dry my nails off with my blow dryer like under it, you know, because it's not like it's getting underneath the bottom of your nail. That's sealed essentially. It's actually getting in underneath. And you're getting ready to seal it again. You know, I if that's what I do. If I have a couple days, I'll take a little bit of that, like, squeeze nail glue. Just a little bit. Because I've realized if you do a lot, they kind of have a hard time when they go back. Or when you go back to get your nail repaired. Because it's stuck on and it's just, like, they either got to soak it off fully. As opposed to just kind of filing the top down getting it smoothed out and then just filling over top of it. They have to either take the whole thing off or it really wreaks havoc on your actual nail, them having to, you know, just clip and chip and do all that stuff. So I try to do as a small of a layer as I can. I cannot pick up this wooden dowel. Well, anyways, I was in my process. I got everything good. I washed my fingernails and I dried them off and I put alcohol underneath and let that dry as well. I don't know if it's like OCD. I don't know if it's OCD or if it's just me trying to be extra careful. But I like to do a splash of alcohol on my nails as well before I try to seal them down again.
Well, anyways, I was putting the alcohol underneath and I noticed something kind of funny. And I didn't have my lights or the lights on my bathroom all the way on. I've got like two sets of lights in my bathroom. So you could do like a dim or you can do super bright. But I noticed something odd that, you know, I don't usually see. So I flicked both lights on and I'm glad I did because when I flicked both the lights on and I looked, I had two spots on my nail. It was my thumbnail that were discolored. And it wasn't like just like a light discoloring that could have been from like whatever. I don't know what it could have been, but it was like a kind of a deeper yellow discoloration. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Because I have read up on nails just in general, in spare time, out of curiosity, because I've heard this, because I've heard that. And I know that nail infections are a thing. And I try my hardest to keep my nails as clean as I can for that very reason. And, you know, sometimes it's nobody's fault, really. If something happens, your nail lifts in an area where you can't see or feel. Or, you know, there's an air bubble in there that happened while they were you know doing your nails it just wasn't sealed properly and now moisture and bacteria has a way to get in and it's a recipe for disaster because it's you know a dark damp place and we all know that's like a breeding ground for bacteria well anyway I looked at my nail and I had the little yellow spots in my nail so I'm like okay no you know in my mind I'm like freaking out I'm trying not to freak out because I've seen pictures of just nasty, nasty, nasty nail infections of people that didn't pay attention or, you know, nail techs that failed to see that there may have been something starting and just wanted the money. So they, you know, did the fill anyways. It's just tons of stuff. And I'm just like, shit, you know, that's the last thing I need is for my freaking, you know, fingernails to be infected and you know, I'm thinking, wow, you know, it's been way over time since I've got a new set. Is there all my nails going to be like this? Are there some of them that are worse? Because I've looked at pictures and, you know, yeah, a light tinging of the nail is like the beginning of a nail infection. But who knows what's underneath all my other ones? That's just what I kept thinking. And I was like, I had myself so freaked out. So... <laughs> I soaked off my nails and after I got all my nails soaked off my thumbnail was the only one that had the yellow like discoloration and I still don't know what it's from I don't know if maybe it was lifted a little bit and I got moisture under it because mind you this is the same thumbnail that I showed you last week in the video that had broke so I just went and got this filled and I don't know we didn't take the whole or yes, we did. We did take the whole thing off, but we were going quick because we were just trying to repair the one. And I don't know if something happened and it just didn't get sealed properly or or what. But <clears throat> I know that was the one that I just got repaired. So the fact that it's even popping off now, something wasn't right. And it probably was just accidental because I've been going to the same nail place for a very long time and I've never had any trouble. They're wonderful there. Well, anyways, so naturally, I had to take off all of my other nails because I was just freaking out too bad. So I did it the gentle way. I just used the acetone and I soaked my nails. And then, you know, <clears throat> every minute or so I would go in with, um, I used a combination of this like metal tool and a fake nail to kind of lift a little bit on the nail and then eventually it let more and more acetone get in and then I just could lift the whole nail off. I, I watched the guy as he soaked my nails off before so I kind of tried to copy what he does and it, it worked really good. They came off. I didn't have too much damage on my fingernails at all. I was quite surprised at myself. And I... um. Kind of lost my train of thought a little bit. I'm getting into this. I'm just like, 
Oh, well, anyways, I took off all my other nails, and my thumbnail was the only one that had been affected by whatever it was being affected by. So, this is kind of why we're at where we're at now, because it, you know, I don't know. Like I said to myself, it's been a while since I've just let my nails breathe. I've, because we went so long without being able to get our nails professionally done, once we started, and I don't know wherever you're at, your nail salons may be closed down, but, you know, I use the little press-on kits, like I said, or I just said I experimented with different um, ways of doing my nails at home, the dip nails, and I tried to do my own acrylics, and I did the press-ons, and I did the this and the that, and, you know, I, I've had something on my nails the whole time. It's been a while since I've just had a chance to breathe, and... I guess I'm using this as that time. Well, anyways, well, you know, this cuticle stuff works really good. Um, This is where we're at right now. I have these little, my aunt gave these to me, the little nail appliques, and I didn't want to put another fake nail on top of something that may be infected. So I decided to kind of just let them breathe. I put that... Um, nail strengthener on top of it and I just have kind of let them be for the past couple days and I kind of want something pretty but I also want it to be kind of clear so I can see if things are going haywire again um but I, I think we're good you know the discoloration hasn't returned I did uh I've been doing nail soaks with my natural nails and vinegar I do like oh shoot I don't know pretty much 50-50. I do just a little bit of water and then I do a little bit of vinegar and I soak my nails for 15 minutes and I do I did that every night. And then one of the nail techs I had a super long time ago said that there is oil in Vicks, like the vapor rub that you use when you're sick. I think it's like eucalyptus or peppermint oil or something like that, but one of those oils fights bacteria. So after I do my vinegar soak, this is a really stinky process. <laughs> I put a touch of the Vicks on top of each of my nails and I just kind of go to bed. And you know, it's worked. My nails look better. The nail that I had a problem with doesn't look like anything at all. It looks like all my other nails. So I think we're okay to do something. Well, anyways. Oh my gosh, I need some more coffee. Wouldn't that be great if I coffee companies comfy a coffee company <laughs> a coffee company <clears throat> decided that because I drink so much coffee in this pretty butterfly mug my mom got me that they would start sending me coffees to try out and talk to you guys about <laughs> Emma 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 chamberlandcoffee.com I see you. <laughs> we're screwing up the angle. And we're making some coffee. No, I joke because I love her. I, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what it is about her. But there is something about that woman that just... She makes me laugh. She makes me feel like I have a buddy. And that is one of the people that I just absolutely adore. And I wish they had like hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of footage that I could watch because I love them. So I'm talking about Emma Chamberlain. She's just the best in my eyes. I have a few people that I just watch religiously all the time and she will be one of them. That's why I said I needed a coffee company to sponsor me because she has a coffee company. Anyways, <laughs> long story short, I uh, I need to make some coffee before we start. I don't know if I could set you up so you could see. Can you see? Ooh, there we go. <clears throat> I had to put some lotion on my hands. My hands get so dry lately. <clears throat> I actually got this um, Neutrogena. It's a Neutrogena 
hand lotions. Right now I am drinking Karen's specialty coffee. This is like a K cup coffee pod. However, they it's a non-plastic K pod cup or coffee pod cup, whatever you want to call it. And it's biodegradable and compostable. So it kind of makes me feel good. And whatever this Jamaica Blue Mountain blend, it says it's full bodied, in complex, medium dark roast. It is so good. The, oh, it's called an eco pod. That's what these are called. Because you can, it's compostable basically. And you can recycle it. So that's what that's called. But I don't know, for whatever reason, try this stuff if you ever see it. It looks like this. It is very good. To me, anyways, and I like a dark, kind of a stronger coffee. I like to taste the coffee flavor. I don't use sugar in my coffee. I just use a little bit of creamer. <clears throat> but it's really, really good. From this, I'm using the Unlock. Coffee Mate Espresso. This is the Italian Espresso Roast. I feel so weird because I'm like going like this, but I have you sitting up against some bananas right now, so wow. But anyways, this is the one that I'm using right here. And I also am going to mix in a little bit of Coffee Mate French Vanilla because that is my shit. I love it. I wish I could learn how to make this stuff to save me money. <clears throat> cool if my hair was that color that would be like so awesome if you could do stuff like that in your hair instead of like getting it dyed you get like prints on it dude vision from the future if this happens you know i'm the one right there it's my intellectual property <laughs> hair patterns okay <laughs> they probably they probably do it somewhere, and I've got my thumb over the button, so. But that would be so awesome if you could do it in, like, different colors and different, like, flower patterns. Like, I would rock it. I know it would be a little bit crazy, but so what? Like, I love these little things. It's just, like, a little thing that ties around your ponytail. And, long story, I grew my hair out when I was pregnant with my son, and it was really long, but because I didn't do anything to it, I didn't get it trimmed. I um, I had like a little split ends here and there and whatever. Well, anyways, long story short, I went to a lady that I had never been to before. And obviously, I am of the mixed variety. So, my hair is different. You have to treat it different. You have to cut it different. You have to do everything different to it because of the natural texture of my hair. It looks straight. But when I wash it, girl, I got like curls up to there. Well, anyways, she cut my hair <laughs> when it was wet. She trimmed my hair when it was wet. Anyways, I had hair like down below my shoulders like to my back when I went in there and I trusted her I went to the salon I've been going to this salon forever I just never went to this girl but my nail lady recommended her because she does my nail lady's hair and she had curly hair herself so I figured she'd know how to do it I don't know if this was just like a you know, I never done anything to this girl. I was giving her my business. I don't know if it was just one of those absent-minded type things or her. Because sometimes people look at me and they think that I don't have, like, the hair texture that I do because of the way that I wear it and because of how I style it usually. Not like this, but usually I just flat iron it and I have it straight and it looks believable because I am so light. You know, you don't think I have this crazy, coarse thick just super curly hair well anyways she washed my hair and she was supposed to trim my ends and I walked out of that salon barely being able to put my hair into a ponytail and obviously I was super self-conscious because well not a lot of people have this trouble but I have trouble growing my hair you know I I'm a vegetarian so I don't get an adequate amount of protein like I need to and that influences you know what What's in my body influences what comes out of my body, how my nails grow, how my hair grows, you know, just things like that. And I have trouble sometimes. You know, when I was pregnant with my son, I was doing better for my body. So my hair was growing at like a rapid rate. And I think pregnancy, something about pregnancy helps your hair. Well, anyways, <clears throat> she cut it off super short and I was like so upset. 
I was devastated. <clears throat> and I started putting my hair in a ponytail, which I still do. You know, this wasn't that long ago. I started putting my hair in a ponytail. And to make myself feel better, I just started wearing, like, headbands and little ponytail ties because it kind of like <laughs> put a little bit of an accessory on my hair and made me feel like there was something there. I know it's silly, but <clears throat> if you're so used to having like longer hair and then all of a sudden it's gone and you're having a really hard time with it and it's like a big deal, like it was like a big deal to me. Get a little ponytail, get something, get a ribbon, Something that makes your hair, because like it just makes it, even though this isn't your hair, it's longer. It's where your hair would be. It makes you feel like your hair is longer, and it just makes you feel better. I know that's so superficial, and it's so just <sighs> a bad mindset to have. You shouldn't have your day be ruined, your mental state be ruined over your hair, but you know... Sometimes people work really super hard to do certain things and when something unexpected happens like that, it really does kind of rock your world a little bit in the wrong way. So that's why I started wearing these <laughs> because it, it helps me not just be upset. Okay, I'm trying to get you set back up. I knew that was a bad idea to take you with me because it took me so long the first time to get it because I'm trying to get it so my head's not chopped off but you can still see my fingers and it's like the hardest thing in the world for some reason whatever we're gonna have a half a head in this video <laughs> here we'll go like this I'm just gonna talk like this no okay we've washed our hands we did our cuticle remover we're gonna use the opposite side of the stick if need be and this is really bugging me I wonder if I go just back little bit more. Well, that's a little bit better. I still have a yellow circle on my screen. I don't know what it's for. I just need a camera. I feel like I won't have as much trouble. Oh my gosh, and we only have 38 minutes and 50 seconds. I think my video is going to cut off. Crap. Hold on. Let me see if I can delete the other one. I don't even know where I left off. Okay, we washed our hands. We removed the cuticles with a cuticle remover. Now the next step is to clean polished or bare nails with nail polish remover or alcohol. So we're going to use alcohol because I just used the acetone and acetone is a little bit stronger than just nail polish. Now it still says 13 minutes and 40 seconds so I guess we're going to have to do this quick as can be. I'm getting a little bit of alcohol. It's 91% isopropyl alcohol and we are going to clean the surface of our nails. And back to my story, um, I'm giving my nails a little bit of a break because of the discoloration. I just want to make sure everything is good because all the articles I was reading said that the best thing to do is just to remove any, you know, acrylics or anything that you had going on in your nails. Let your nails kind of have a breather, take your biotin, do the vinegar soaks. Um, once or twice a day for 15 minutes depending on your sensitivity level and give them a few weeks because you don't want anything to get worse. It says yes you can polish over anything depending on the level of infection obviously. I think mine was just the start of it because it wasn't you know crazy colored or anything like that. Um, it's just depending on the level but you want to make sure you can see what's going on with your nails and um, make sure that if you have to uh, take further action, you'll know when to do it. Okay, now basically, it just says to pick. This is what they look like. I don't know if you can see. There we go. And it just says to pick what size best fits your finger. Start at the cuticle. Or peel off the backing. And then it says apply starting near the cuticle. Smooth down towards the tip of the nail. So they want you to start from the back and work your way to the front. 
And that's what we shall do. I've never used these before, so I don't know how they work. I know they make all different kinds of these. These are just like the peel and stick ones. I know they make ones that you have to use like with heat and it like essentially saran wraps over your finger and there's all kinds of crazy ones. So my thumb is pretty big. We have to figure out what kind of pattern we want. Thumb, I'm just kind of pre-sizing them. It looks like the second smallest will fit my pinky. That's gonna fit the middle finger. That'll fit this finger, and then I'll probably need... Okay, so we're going to start... with... Well... No, because that's going to be too big. I kind of want the flower... No, we'll start with this one. Alright, so it just says, peel the backing away from it. Oh, it's like a sticker. Wow, okay. So, it's very sticky... I recommend getting your uh, tweezers at this point and just kind of lifting all the way around. See what I'm doing is I'm just using my tweezers to peel from the front of it. And now there's a flat end and a circular end. In my mind, I think that I should put the circle end towards the bottom of my nail because it's kind of rounded. Maybe just use the tweezers for removal because it's kind of rounded at the bottom and it would make the fit easier. And then it just says stick on your nail and apply to the tip. What I'm doing is I'm just, I, I've stuck it on there and I'm sealing it all the way around. I did it backwards. See how one side is flat and one side is rounded? Instead of using the flat end at the bottom of my nail, I'm using the rounded end at the bottom of my nail because I think that will be the easiest way. Now it says bend over the top of your nail and it says file off. So, let's see if it is working. Oh, it is kind of working. You have to kind of Apply a little bit of pressure and act like you're really filing your nail. And if you act like you're really filing your nail, the nail file cuts the plastic away. And you have a nice pretty nail. This is what I just filed off of my nail little piece and then we'll use this to stick down the sides where my cuticle are so it looks uniform and wrap the rest we're just making sure there's no air bubbles wow that worked really good look can you see that how cool is that <laughs> it's like I painted little crisscrosses. Okay, I'm going to bring you up and I'm going to tilt you down so you can kind of see. Is that a good angle? I can't tell. So you can see exactly what I'm doing for this next one. Okay, so we're going to pick another size. Cut these. Now I kind of want to go with like a pink on this one. So that's going to be too big. That would probably fit my middle finger. This one would probably fit that one. I'm probably going to have to do another white. Or no. Hold on. This. Yeah. I wonder if I could just make that work. And use the bigger pink. I could use this one. That one. This one. And then that one. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this size. A little bit bigger of a size we're gonna do what we did P 
skillet with the tweezers because they are kind of stuck on there. Okay, now that I got it with the tweezers, I feel like this is a really bad, like, can you see me? Maybe I just set you all the way down, but so you're straight still. Okay, <clears throat> now, like I said, I'm using the rounded portion of it. And I'm placing that back towards my cuticle like this. And I'm just lining it up kind of close. And then pushing it all the way down. And then it says to bring over. Now my nails are really short right now because I had acrylics on. And I am going to push it in to my cuticle before I trim it this time just to make sure I have all those edges covered and then kind of break that line across my nail a little bit so I don't have to file so much and now you just take your file see I got it wrapped around my fingertip now it just says take your file and file and look you see I don't know if you can see that no you probably can't there's a little slit starting to happen where you file it you just got to give yourself a little bit of pressure like you're actually filing your nail and then you peel off that part and then this is what it looks like right now can you see and all I did was just push those edges around and under my nail and now we've got two what I'm working with so far on bare nails it looks cute I mean I'm used to having my nails done but it's a lot better than not having anything on your nails okay now we're gonna move on to the next one we're going to use this one. I guess we're just going to do every other. It doesn't really give you an option. You don't have uh, very many size options. That would be one thing that I would suggest if you do get some of these. And you have like those nails where like every nail kind of fits the same nail. So you know I feel like this is going to be. That almost looks like it might be too small. We might have to do this one the other way. And push it into the sides because it's wider at the, the bottom. Hmm, that one doesn't really want to fit all that well. Nope, that's gonna bother me. Okay, so we're going to skip that one. We might have to have two pink in the center. We're gonna use this on the next nail. Which it will work for that one. Okay, cool. And this you just fold it over. And make sure you make it all the way flat. This one might not stick for super long. I find if you like pinch it like this and then push it down, it kind of is a little bit easier to file off because you have um, a little something to kind of base your nail file on. Just file it off and boom, we're done. And I'm just cleaning up the edges a little bit. I'm not really like filing my nail more so I'm just filing that uh, little bit of plastic. And then we're going to take that and kind of tuck it underneath the lip of my nail. Yeah, I might have to do this one again. This one doesn't want to stick very well because there's like pearls right at the end. And it doesn't want to stick. Plus I touched it a whole bunch of times. Yeah, definitely don't touch them a bunch because I think they're uh, 
functionality is really based off of how sticky they are. All right, and we got three down. <laughs> oh, it's telling me that I have to stop. Okay, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to pause it, finish up at least one hand, and then I'll show you because it says I only have like 30 seconds left. Okay, hold on. Okay, I cleared a little bit of space. You guys are going to be with me for the last two. I've actually made some progress. Here, what my nails look like so far. I got all of them done. It's cute. I think it's so adorable for giving your nails a break but still having like a design before after look how cute and you can get pretty much any design you want and i've learned that through doing these definitely use the tweezers to pull them off it doesn't matter if you use the square side or the round side but don't touch the stickiness too much because your nail in its application depends greatly on the stickiness and it doesn't have to fit your nail perfect once you get it over it just kind of blends in like this one's going to be an oddball size but that's okay and don't file your nails perfect before you do this because you have to file them a little bit to get the Plastic to kind of break away and then you just pull it off and then touch up the edges you want to go in this way you want to go in that way so you're kind of wrapping it towards the inside of your nail instead of pulling out and any little pieces you can just take because it is sticky so it wants to get stuck everywhere you can just take and pull off with your tweezer and then just Fit it on and you're done. We're going to do the last one now. My pinky is going to be another white one. I would suggest if you're going to get these though, get either multiple packs. If you have those fingers that like five of the same nails fit like all your fingers, that's kind of how my fingers are. It's like they're all the same size except for my thumb and my pinky. <laughs> I don't know. So I would maybe suggest getting another pack or getting a few different uh, styles just so you have more options as far as patterns and how you want things to look I mean what we got hold on let me file this I gotta file it towards the center towards the center and then pull it off these are so cute this would be you know you might have to help them, but this would be a really good idea for a little girl. That's what I keep thinking here. Let's pop it up. Get your skin back up. I think this would be a great idea for, like, a little girl. So you don't have to paint their nails. Because look how cute. You can't see it, but on the ones that look like this, there's pink. It's pink flowers with the white in the inside. And then the rest is just white with the little pearls. But that's the pattern we came up with. We got three all white with the pearls. And then these two are like the accent nails with like the pink coloring. You just can't see it very well. But, you know, well you can't see anything around there. It's definitely better than blank nails. And I think they look pretty good. And it was so easy. Like I said, I think it would be good for like a little girl or something. You know, if she wanted to have like a cool design or she wanted to like match your nails and you weren't very good at painting them, get some of these nail stickers. You literally stick it on and push it down. File the edge off. Not even a lot either. You just have to file it enough to break the very thin plastic, like literally that much. And you can separate it and you're done. And I'm sure they come in a variety of like shapes and sizes and well, everything. I mean, these are a Mar these are for Mary Kay. Uh, not sure if they make them anymore, but hey, it's worth a try. 
But anyways, I just wanted to do that with you guys. And I kind of whoa. <laughs> I kind of wanted to check in a little bit. Um, show you my messy background. <laughs> There's just stuff everywhere. And give you a little tutorial on how I did my nails. Oh, wait. Are we going to do a thumbnail? Oh, <laughs> it's backwards. No. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you for watching. Love you. Mm -hmm.